Welcome to the Lighter Side of the Dark Side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and all your podcast catchers, iHeartRadio, YouTube. It's me, Dark Mark, the goth comedian. And uh, this is a, a, we're turning over a new page past his prologue. We have a new co-host who used to be a, a co-host, actually, uh, everybody's favorite horror writer, the author of Some Fucked Up Shit and Some Fucked Up Shit Goes, Nicole Six. Woo! <laughs> I think we've done this before, Mark. Once or twice. Oh, last time we were in a studio with a lot more alcohol. No, you did a few. You did a few Zoom shows. I know. You did a couple of Zoom. Last time I think you were. We were zooming. I was. That was me referencing to the fact that I've been your host before. <laughs> no, I understand that. And when we were in the studio, you always insisted on some Fireball whiskey, which I was happy to provide. And. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not quite like that. Mark was always very much a gentleman and would ask each person what they'd like to drink. And most people chose water and I chose Fireball. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of our, our guests chose Fireball too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. We were actually uh, commiserating last night at the Sunset Grill and uh, plotting yes. out the future. And we got some exciting guests coming up. Exciting guests today. I uh, haven't been doing a lot of live shows because of the pandemic, but I went to, Las Vegas in uh, on New Year's, and I met this comic. And you know, Nicole, I I I'm very hesitant to have comics on the show. I usually don't have That's comics true. on the show. When I have comics on the show, they have to be interesting other than comedy. And this person is very interesting other than comedy. Um, we're going to talk about all sorts of things from Shakespeare to breast milk and <laughs> everything in between. That's it's, quite the topic. <laughs> It's, and from coast to coast, uh, she's very funny and very interesting. Shibli Quarterman. Woo! Hello. Thank you Hello. for having me. Did You've I pronounce the last name right? Quarterman. Yeah, perfect. It's not like Alan Quartermain. It's Quarterman. Quarterman. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, that is I. Literary reference nobody got, except for the two people that saw League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I, I know the <laughs> reference just because everyone asked me that. Is it I'm Sean sure, Connery? I, yeah. Yes. Sean Connery. Sean I Connery's think. movie that 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 uh, made him retire because it was so bad. Oh. That gave us a do bad do. name. Yeah. Anyway, he's dead and we're alive and uh, <laughs> we're alive. so. Fuck him. Uh, before, Fuck that guy. Before we get started, uh, I've got to do our sponsors really quick. Audible <clears throat> is still sponsoring the show, Nicole. Awesome. And uh, the, the deal's even better than it than it ever has been. You can get a free book, and they have everything from Shakespeare to smut. I actually just uh, downloaded and listened to the autobiography of Rob Halford from Judas Priest. Oh, nice. Which is very interesting. A lot of, uh, a lot of rock star and anal sex tales there. And, uh, <laughs> the, um, and, and, but they've got everything. Whatever you're into, from Shakespeare to smut, you get a free book. And it used to be where you, get, you just got one free Audible original. Now you have access to thousands of audible originals and you can you can download those at your leisure uh with the with the membership and just go to uh audibletrial.com forward slash dms audibletrial.com forward slash dms free book free 30-day trial access to thousands of audible originals you can cancel the next day but i bet you don't because you get deep discounts if you stay and uh also sponsored by do me's home cooking the best vegan food you ever had. Shibli, I, 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 I see your, your lovely curves. I'm assuming you're not vegan. I'm not vegan, no. No, I'm not vegan, as <laughs> I'm sure you surmised. Nicole is not vegan, but we I, love I, Jimmy's Mom Cooking. We do. We love vegan food. I'm actually going to a birthday party on Saturday. Hopefully he doesn't tune into this because it'll, it'll ruin the surprise. But I'm planning on getting him some uh, vegan treats from Das Baker. Ah, Das Baker does... And that's a take, that's on the takeoff of Das Bunker, mm -hmm. which is the uh, industrial club. He does the, the desserts, but they have pulled pork. They have uh, shrimp po' boys. Last time we were there, I had the chicken cordon bleu. Uh, mm. Just vegan junk food. Nachos, they have Mexican restaurant. cheese fries. What's that? I said nachos and chili cheese fries. The nachos were, were voted the one of the 10 best nachos in L.A. by the L.A. Weekly, the only one without meat. Go to wow. 23 Vine Street in Hollywood. There's one in Culver City and one in Toronto, Canada. Doomy's Home Cooking. It's the best. 
And one more sponsor. You're not familiar with this one uh, yet, uh, Nicole. But okay. you know I like to drink energy drinks. Yes. I don't drink coffee. I, I like tea, but I prefer my cold energy drinks. And I've tried them all. All of them. Steven Seagal's energy drink. They had one that had horny goat weed in it. I've tried them <laughs> all. This is the best. Ray's energy drink. Ooh, wow. R-E-E. You can't get this at 7-Eleven. You can't get this at the supermarket. But they do have it at GNC's. They did have it at gyms before all the gyms closed in LA. But uh, there's gyms in Vegas that probably carry this. But the best way to get this is to use my code, which will be in the description of the show, on your podcast catchers, on YouTube. You get 15% off a case. This is Apollo f- flavor. <laughs> Look, awesome. They have Baja lime flavor. They have sour gummy worms. They have great bubble gum. Great flavors. So I'll have to get some of those for my friend Luis. He always drinks energy drinks. Like that's his thing. Get him a so, case, 15% off. I can think of people too. Definitely uh, a lot of people out there would be interested in this product. Does he like great bubble gum? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> get in the sour gummy worms. I like it. Okay, anyway, I could probably like it. Before we yeah, talk to Chablis, Nicole, you had something you wanted to talk about. Oh, yes. We haven't quite worked this out yet, but uh, we want to do a segment with you guys where I talk about something that's trending. And today, I'm going to do a very short little explanation of Nathan the Cat Lady. So I was, I've been cooped up for quarantine. And so I've been doing more and more stuff on Instagram because now they have IG video and they have reels and they have all these different things you can watch on Instagram. So I was scrolling through and I found Nathan the cat lady. And this is a attractive single man who lives with three cats and he films them. He also feeds squirrels. He has a little picnic table on his balcony, like little squirrel sized picnic table. And he has little nuts. So if you are interested. Oh, wait, uh, wait, wait a second. Wait say- a second. <laughs> he feeds the, the little nuts to the squirrels. He doesn't have literal little nuts. <laughs> he has little peanuts he gives the squirrels and a oh, tiny okay. tiny picnic table they sit on he's, he's out teabagging this- squirrels yeah, i don't think this <laughs> where do i find this <laughs> nathan the cat lady with his miniature balls that's cool oh. anyway. you knew it was going, you knew it was going there you, you set me up too easy nicole it's cute it's a guy it's a guy he's an actor i'm still thinking about how cool it is that there's a hot single guy that in a cat so ladies you should all look at Nathan the cat lady. That's what I'm going to say. People, oh, when I Googled him, because I was curious more and more about him, the top two things Googled were his, if he was gay and his net worth. <laughs> oh, wow. Did they both check out for you? <laughs> I didn't click on them. I was, didn't find the information I was looking for, but uh, mm. I still like his account, so I'm going to watch it every day because that's right. what I do. I wake up now because uh, I uh, do social media management while COVID's happening, so there's nothing really else to do. So literally, I'm on my phone like for like the first three hours of my day. And I have a whole list of different accounts now I check out, and he's on that list now. Nathan the Cat Lady. Moving over to Nathan, Nathan, Nathan the Cat Lady. Yeah. I'm trying to get him on the podcast. I've already uh, emailed him, but uh, yeah, this is... Uh, welcome to LA, Chili. This is the type of stuff you get here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Because Chablis from New York. Yep. Do they have uh, male cat ladies in New York? I'm sure they do. I wouldn't fuck them, um, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. Is it because they're tiny balls? <laughs> it's the tiny balls. Actually, I prefer. I like a nice, taut, succinct ball sack. A nice, taut scrotum. Well, we better. St- we, well, let's talk about this because I, I, you know, most women. <laughs> That I know, not 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 that into balls, but I've been with two or three that were all about the balls. They no. couldn't stay away from the balls. I, I don't like when they look like an egg that's just been cracked into the into the pan, and it's like a boo. It's like a, and it hangs and it's all droopy. Well, that I sounds like, like somebody has cancer. Yeah, I don't like. Oh, maybe if that's a guy, I wish my exes would. Um, come yeah, that's down. a that's no. somebody that needs some uh, testicular uh, checkup. Uh, Nicole, what, what are your feelings about balls? I, and I'm sorry this trans. Well, I, as I know you like Nathan the Cat Lady. I'm sorry this transitioned into into <laughs> dick talk right away, but um, no, no, that's fine. I actually want this bit. To, this is our first time starting it, so it was a little rocky. But I, I'd like for it to only take like a couple of minutes because the main thing here is to interview the guests. In answer to your question about testicles, I like a nice shaft 
And then I like to massage the testicles while I'm giving head. Because right. guys like that. Do you like large? Like their balls. Do you like them large? Do you like them asymmetrical? Do you like them taut? Like I like them clean. Like a, clean the, is uh, nice. a guy I'm currently mm -hmm. seeing, he always is clean. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the balls smell. So I know like Lee had a uh, you had an encounter with a uh, uncircumcised man that didn't go quite go so well. Is that right? You did all your oh. research. wow. Um, yeah, I like it was the first person I hooked up with after my ex, so I was already like reticent in a weird place, and then I get like schmegma dick like that did i deserve that no i don't think so but it took me eight bangs to realize that that he was uncircumcised <laughs> i'd be like well he like i was calling my girlfriends and i'm like this dude's dick is sour and they were like sour and i said yeah like have you encountered that they're like no and i've banged other guys that were uncircumcised before because i love europeans like i have a I have a fetish for European guys. Yeah, so we're going to get to that. Taste it, but this guy just does not get in there. And I love him. He's a good friend of mine, but he just, um, yeah, it took me like the seventh or eighth bang because I always was drunk when I hooked up with him because I wasn't that into him. And um, I finally like got a look at it and I was like, oh, there's like skin I've been pulling down this whole time. So stay away. That fireball like you're talking about, it's no good. What did you think you were pulling down <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't think it was skin? No, we were just in the in the dark, so I was just dipping in my mouth. Like it wasn't like right. I was counting it. It doesn't really look or feel different when it's hard. Mm. You know, I'll take was, your word for it. I was. Trying. I've never been with anyone circumcised. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you this now. After you know the six or seven drunken times that you do this, do you actually <laughs> go to him and say, uh, uh, "Sir, your 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 penis is a bit sour." Yeah, I think, you know, because I was really drunk, <laughs> I think I was like, oh, you're not circumcised? And he was like, no, you didn't know that? And I was like, no, I didn't know. And I, I think I did address the taste of it, but I'm not sure. And then I didn't bring it up to, I feel like that's really hurtful. So I didn't say it. I just right. took it like a champ the next couple times. But wouldn't he want to <laughs> know? That says a lot about my boundaries. <laughs> Would you want to scrub them something? up a little bit? And, uh, oh, did I do what? Would you want to scrub them up a little bit? And you know, Ugh. I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, it's just it's too much work. It shouldn't be work. It yeah, wasn't yeah. designed to be like that. So yeah, put some. Uh, uh, I just bared down and I, and I yeah. just took it to the face like a champ. Put he some was really up. job and blow job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he made it. <laughs> he made it a job. But um, I don't know. Maybe I should have sucked some ice. Like I could have made it. Like let's get kinky with some ice, and then it just closed all my um, ice is good. Ice buds. Well, I that's, mean, you could. That's I mean, for all you girls sucking the uncircumcised peepees. Just suck some ice. Just yeah. Just uh, you didn't even text him like, uh, dude, put some axe under the turtle head. You know, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I should have. I don't know why I didn't do that. Well, you can. You, it's never too late. But. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, women are, yeah, women are, uh, well, I guess guys too. It's, 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 a, it's a weird thing. It's, you know, people aren't, people aren't honest when they're fucking completely. I didn't, I had no idea that a dick could stink. I understand pussy, you know, like I've been so, in the bathrooms <laughs> on a hot summer day at like Orchard Beach, you know, <laughs> but like, same thing with dicks. I had no idea dick could smell. They could stick to the they stuff. could stick to the leg. All sorts of stuff happens. No, I'm coming to it, your it, It's sweaty. It's a very sensitive area. It gets very it can get funky. Like I said, I like a clean dick. I like a clean dick, I like clean balls. I like the courtesy that goes into that. Also, it's right by the ass. It, it, it's all sorts it, of stuff going on there. So yeah. anyway, I, I, let, yeah. I, I don't want to talk about his uh, smegma all, all night uh, as much as I would like to. But you uh were you born in New York? I know you were raised in New York. Uh, yeah, born and raised in New York. Yep, New York Hospital. And you are freckle face Boricua. Yes, half with with a, with a British name. Yep, my dad's British. I'm getting my citizenship. That's awesome. awesome. Are, Thank you. I'm are, you are, are you getting into Puerto Rico too, or? Well, Puerto Rico's part of. Oh, America. Puerto Rico's part of the United States. What am I thinking? No. Yeah. I, I got smegma on the brain, but. <laughs> but you, that's how you I grew, travel too. You yeah. grew up in New York. You grew up in New York, and uh, half English, half Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Now, 
was 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 your did your father stick around? Was he part of the family? Yeah. Um. So my parents were dating for like three months, and my mom was like, "I want me a baby from a white man," and he was like, "I don't really know you." And then he spunked inside her anyway, and here I am. <laughs> I know um, Puerto Rican girls. Abortion, so he was like, no, you're not going to kill it. She was like, I'm not trying to kill it. I was trying to, uh, this was on purpose. So I was wanted. Um, and then my dad, I got really lucky. So I was born um, in New York hospital, which is on 70th in New York. And then my dad lived on 70th in New York between first and New York. And I went to school on 68th and first, and my mom worked on 70th in New York. So I would get out of school, go see my dad. And then I would walk down the block to my mom's. And we'd head home together. So I would see both my parents every day. That's good. Because, because oh, you wouldn't think that because I'm so fucked up. But no, no, I wouldn't think that because your whole act is about how you want to fuck your dad. Oh, my dad, very, I know, very attractive. It's not daddy issues. I don't have an issue with it. <laughs> so, you just want to fuck your dad. Oh, maybe his clone. <laughs> wow. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> My mom sent me some pictures of my dad the other day, and I was like, Hoo, is it hot in here? It was no, you not- posted one on, on the social media, I think. What'd you say? You posted one on social media, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I've, been, I, I've been very paying attention, especially lately, to your social media, because you posted pictures of your dad and a lot of uh, scantily plaid, plaid photos. Yes. On Instagram. So, I'm which proud is, of the girls, pride and joy. Oh, those. Uh, so the right one is pride. And the left one is joy. It wow. was for sure. Yes, because for people listening on radio and on podcasts, she's pointing to her breasts. <laughs> My chichis balabanda. Yes. Yeah, because you, don't, you and I'm sure a lot of people tell you, especially since you dye your hair, you don't look boricua, but uh, I guess the boricua comes out. <laughs> it comes out. Well, I think I have boricua titties. You My have mom? a equal body, I think, yeah. Thank you. Well, you were, you were covered up when we did the show because uh, it was like, it was freezing outside. I'm it was so really you fucking asked me because I had a horrible set that night and you were, you did really well. I think you were my favorite. And then um, I felt terrible. You know, when you have a bad set, you want to get the fuck out of there. So I'm glad I stuck around and met you afterwards. No, no, I, I'm glad too. No, it, it, it was the crowd, it, it, I I really don't want to talk about comedy, but the crowd was, the crowd needed some goose and well, the crowd I'm, the crowd needed oh, crowd needed some energy and uh, really my set honestly is not uh, I we were like oh it's a fucking great set and, it, and you know for what it was I, I got the crowd going liked you and I I really liked your set and the and the headliner yeah but my uh, my yeah she, she was she was great but um. It was, I mean, I was really going dirty and going, like, trying to get people's attention, just, just getting people just to wake them up. Right. And you know funny? I have more subtle jokes and more intelligent jokes than I did that night. Yeah, no, but it was it was good. But you know what? It's funny because, you know, I didn't do great, and but you were, you went more body and you did, you did well. And I think people always associate me and go, oh, you're so sexual on stage and, like, I'm really not. To me, like my sexual jokes are more like quirky, you know, to say a bang guys, they look like my dad. Like I don't get into the nitty gritty of, you know, intercourse and describing it. And I actually, I did a show in the Poconos for a, a swingers convention. Oh, how'd that go? Woo! Um, it was disgusting. Uh, I think I pictured people <laughs> around looking like, you know, Sofia Vergara and Joe Bandanello. Like everybody looked nah. like Roseanne. No, no, um, I, I, <laughs> when you hit the swingers clubs in, in, uh, in Vegas, because you're in Vegas now, I big swinger so. town. But um, no, but I didn't do well because they wanted really raunchy and I don't have really raunchy material. So it's, right. I, I just find that funny that people lump me into like, you're a sexual comic, but at sexual shows, I'm the least sexual. Like they were bored for my set. Well, like, well, well, the thing is, you're, you're sexy. So <laughs> the other comics are thinking sexual thoughts when you're on stage. Oh. That makes- That's why you're a sexual comic to them. They, how can I say? You know, so, <laughs> but uh, no, but your, your material was great. I told you, I'm like, it, it's just, <laughs> it was just the, 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 the crowd was just, they needed a wake up. They needed, they did not like they needed way more energy. And, uh, uh, and literally I was, I was jumping around like a, like a fucking maniac trying to get them to just you did, pay attention. You did yeah. I don't know how to do that. I've been doing comedy for almost 10 years now. 
and I have never been able to bounce back from a room that has no energy. I don't know how to add the energy to it. I can just be myself. And that's my biggest struggle. That's why my, my comedy is so hit or miss. Um, that's my biggest thing that I struggle with is consistency because I can have a great set with the same material. You know how it goes. Well, I think, I think, I think, I, know, I, think I hate me. I think I know why this is. And this is got, this gets me to my, my next point I was going to get to is that you come from an acting world. Yeah. You come from regimented theater. Yes, you, went I do. To the, you went to the high school that they filmed the TV show and the movies Fame at. Yeah. Wow. You know, fame, I'm going to live forever. I love that school. I miss it. How was that? I mean, you had to audition to get in. I auditioned and you have to have good grades. And listen, I do it all. I'm not just tits. You know what I'm saying? I got some going on up there. I got some going on over there. You know? <laughs> um, it's a mind fuck, though. Like, I Everybody imagine. There and they think they're going to be famous. And you're a kid. I mean, you audition at 13 years old. So, you know, you're Hold going. On, so you were there when you were 13, 14 years old? You, you audition at 13. You go to high school at 14. And then um, it's a huge mind fuck. Like everybody, you know, we, if there's a guest, you want it to be a famous person. Everybody is looking around school like, who's going to be the next famous person? Is it me? And like Timothy Chalamet just hosted SNL a couple weeks ago. And I went to high school with him. And it's like. I'm selling butthole pics and he's on SNL. Like it makes me feel like illegitimate. I don't know. You have to have a thick skin to go there because first of all, it's high school. Everybody has self-esteem issues in high school, but to go to LaGuardia, you're in school with a bunch of super talented, good looking fucking kids who have been on Broadway since they're four years old and they have a nice headshot and you don't even know what a fucking headshot is. And this person's been taking tap lessons since they could walk and you know, I didn't have that. Like my parents, they, they knew I wanted to act. I would always do impressions and things and like dance around and want attention and um, entertaining strangers and things like that. But um, that sounds wrong. But uh, no, it's it's uh, it's definitely rough. Like I wish that my parents had heeded, you know, my wishes of like, I want a headshot. I want to I want an audition. I want to I want a manager or something. I want to go out there because I always wanted to act. And everybody I went to school with, I mean, it's a rich kid school, right? Like, if you get into school right. for playing the oboe, you had to pay for an oboe, you had to pay for lessons, you know, it's a rich person fucking instrument. Is it an instrument? It sounds like a bird, but I think it's an instrument. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, my first boyfriend, he majored, he was an instrumental major, and he played the cello, and he played piano, and he lives in Alec Baldwin's building by NYU. I mean, this is who I went to school with, and I'm, like, some fucking poor kid. Um, I mean, I was lucky. My dad lived in Manhattan, but my dad's a gambler. My dad's an alcoholic. He doesn't spend his money on savings or you like I had none of I had no setup. Like I turned 18 and my parents were like, oh, you're going to call. Is it college time? It's like most people plan for this. I guess we didn't uh, make H a plan. Hence your first name is Chablis. And right, it's a good thing that your father drinks wine instead of beer, or your first name would have been Corona or Budweiser. Or... Thank God it wasn't Corona. Imagine right now. It'd be terrible. Corona that, I made Porterman, a joke about yeah. that. I was like, the parents want to name their next baby Corona. I guess yes. that's out now. Jägermeister Quarterman. Jäger. Well, my son's name is Jameson, so I tried to keep oh, the, it. In <laughs> family <laughs> tradition. Um, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so you went to school with Timothy Chalamet? What was he like in high school? He was popular. He's younger than me, though. And then his sister, I think, was a year ahead of me. And she's in King of Staten Island with uh, Bill Burr and um, mm -hmm. Pete Davidson. Um, so she's got a budding career. But, you know, we didn't talk. He went out with Madonna's daughter. I went to school with Madonna's kid. I was a senior and she was um, she was a freshman. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. It's just it's not normal. So you have to really like, who's know your high school click. <laughs> who was in your people? high school fan click? Ansel Elgort. You know him too. He's in the Divergent series and um, Fault in Our Stars. That book that got turned into um, sounds got, familiar. He's a pretty boy. He was in Baby Driver with like Jamie Foxx. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That's him. So I went to high school with him. And um, no, he. I mean, these guys are younger than me though. So he ended up going to prom in my limo, but he was going to prom with my friend um, Yael. And we uh, no, I asked him. I was like. <laughs> We, we were we were in the drama we were in the basement which is where the drama department is in LaGuardia and we had lunch and um I asked him if he wanted to lick banana pudding off of my tits and he said no oh man but he, no. 
that motherfucker. They had like an ancillary. That sounds camp. that sounds really inviting. Yeah, I know. Really I would say uh, I would say eighty five percent of gay men would take that. Fuck <laughs> them. No, but these guys are really stuck up. Like the thing is, I don't know if you saw there was like an Ansela's canceled party because um it was like leaked conversations of him and young girls and 17 is legal in new york he didn't break a law but he likes a virginal small looking girl i don't know if you've seen his girlfriend but short and petite and she dances and he's not interested in like a big titty girl coming on to him and being like a strong some guys really like a little dead looking thing that they can prey on and that was never me so i was too far and but fuck and you and well, I would still fuck you if you wanted to, but I don't really hate you, but whatever. Yeah, I, but, I like him dead, but for a different reason. And we'll get to the pale skin in a second, but, okay. <laughs> but you did, you've also done Shakespeare on stage. Yes, I have. I like Shakespeare in a park or just? No, I did off-Broadway Shakespeare. My friend Alexis Confer is amazing, and she... Um, she's, uh, she, she's pretty prominent... Um, in like her world of politics and all that stuff. She probably doesn't want me talking about her while we talk about Schmegma and things like that. Cause she's likes to keep her rec- reputation clean. Um, mm-hmm. So we can block her name in the post. <laughs> anyway, um, she was like, I want to direct some plays and I love Shakespeare. So she put together a company. We did improv together when I was like 20 years old mm-hmm. at the pit and um, where I studied for a while. And then I interned there for a year. I did the box office and I fucked a bunch of married dudes doing improv. And that was my time there. But yeah, we did the Shakespeare, did a couple plays with her. I think that, I think she still puts the plays together. I think she calls it now offline productions. So check that out. And it was retweeted by the Alec Baldwin Foundation. So you know we're legit. Um, so yeah, did Shakespeare have just, I, listen, I do it all. I do it all. Well, I, let, let's, uh, since you've referenced Alec Baldwin twice, uh, what is your uh, take on the Hilaria con- controversy? Oh. As a Latina yourself. I know, as like a real as, white. As, 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 a, as a half Latina, and you must really have a unique take on it. Yeah, I actually, I was on another podcast talking about that too. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, no, 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 we did it. We did it Instagram live. No, I mean, yeah, I think that when you're mixed and you can pass for certain things and you can code switch, there's times when I think code switching is a skill like Barack Obama talks about and Kamala Harris does it. And it's a skill that you can relate to different people because you're from different parts of society you share different cultures so um but i think that hilarious hillary i think i think i mean i really do think she did it to be more interesting because like she's a white girl from boston and then spain is also european so i mean does she really have like the flavor she's trying to purport i don't think so i think I think she she turns it on to seem like I'm spicy and I'm married to this millionaire actor and I pop out a kid every five minutes and I which, which, which by the way that's very Latino. What'd you say? Popping out a kid every five minutes is very Latino. I'll give her that. Ouch. <laughs> well, Spain is not Latino. Span- Spanish Spanish is Hispanic, but it's not Latino. No, I know, I know, right. I, and I, I really want. With, honestly, longer- I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, basically, the bottom line is she's boring and. Uh, She's Honestly, boring. She's trying to spice it up, dazzle, dazzle. But she's a boring she, white girl. But what was funny Hispanic, about white Hispanic people? They are they are really white Puerto Ricans. I have some of my family on my English side. They're half the, the Puerto Rican side that they are. They're not, they're not blood to me, but they're like blue eyed, and like really pale. Um, so it just depends. I mean, my mom is Afro Puerto Rican, so she looks like Cardi B. My grandmother looked like Aunt Jemima fell asleep in a tanning bed. Nice. So, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to rebrand her as uh, the mill now. But um, <laughs> and so, but what was funny about uh, following you on stage, and this has never happened to me in many, many years. I've been doing the, uh, the comedy and doing these particular jokes. Is I've never followed somebody or even been on a show with somebody that talked about how much they wanted to fuck pale people. And <laughs> I did that when I was. Uh, w- I, it was the weirdest thing, Nicole. My friend Kevin came, came to see the show, and he's like. Is she stealing your material? I'm like, no, she just she's got her own thing. Yeah, that's been my thing for a very long time. <laughs> well, yeah, me too. Um, yeah, oh, I, I, also like, I like pale nerdy guys that act like Sheldon on uh, 
Big Bang Theory. Oh, that's why you like the, the, cat, the cat guy. I wish I liked nerds. I can't like a nerd. It's okay. My first boyfriend was the Alec Baldwin neighbor. He was a big nerd. And I that's when I liked people for who they were. And now it's like, you're an asshole, but your cock has a hook in it. So I'm going to call you. It's bad. <laughs> But and by the way, the uh, the hook in the uh, the hook in the penis. Um, I did a bit about uh, I do a bit about because uh, my ex girlfriend looked at my penis and uh, she asked how big it was. So I, I whipped it out and she said that's the most perfectly shaped penis I've ever seen. Followed by it looks like it ne it's never been used, which I always wondered <laughs> what a used penis looked like. I did that bit in New Orleans and a seventy year old woman in the front row is like, it looks like a boomerang. So if you ever see like a boomerang. Mm. That's what it looks like. Right, but you like her. Yes. So you get, yeah, that's, yeah. They call it a Captain Hook. Captain Hook. Yeah. Mine is Megan straight Stallion as an arrow, song. but that's the way it goes. Oh, yeah. I love it. Now it gets all the right places. Yeah, you could use mine as a level. But, uh, Shibli, <laughs> when did you first like pale men? Um, I didn't. So when I was in middle school, like, I loved Keanu Reeves, and that was, like, my first major crush for a long time. Very yeah. upset. I would ask my mom to throw a party on his birthday every year to celebrate the day he came into the world. And she was like, you bugging out? I was like, probably. He's so talented Hawaiian. But, huh? Yeah, he's I don't know. But that was my first crush. But he's a white guy. And then um, I went to school. There were no white people in my school, even though I was on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It was like inner city kids that would all bust there, including oh. me, because I would come from my mom's neighborhood, really. But my dad did live right there. It's, like, again, a very complicated identity. But there were no white boys. And then I took a math class in eighth grade. They, it was a school that had different schools in the building. So my elementary slash middle school, I was in eighth grade. And I took math courses in one of the high schools because, again... This girl's thinking. I um, was one of like two or three students who got to take math with the with the older kids in the high school. Oh, so advanced. And um, I used to be smart. And there was like a cute Russian boy in the class. And that was one of the first like, I think I like white boys. Because I also like eighth grade was the year before I went to high school. And I had a Puerto Rican boyfriend. And all he fucking talked about was Puerto Rico. And I was like, then fucking go to Puerto Rico. Like. <laughs> I don't, I hate that shit. I find it really irritating. Um, and so he, I was like, write me a love song. And he was like, yo soy boricua y tu sabe. And I was like, what does that mean? Sounds romantic. And he's like, it means I'm Puerto Rican and you know it. And I was like, I got to fucking find something else. because This does not <laughs> excite me. So I was turned off and I was like, I don't relate to this. I don't speak Spanish. I don't really, I'm not into the culture. I was always more of the Caucasian persuasion. And I would be like, I didn't get a real, like along with my mom's side of the family because I was the only one that like had a dad and I was the only one that like lived in Manhattan. And it was just a different life and they resented me for being born. I didn't choose it. Like my, like my alcoholic gambler father is, is uh, so perfect. Anyway, to them, it was a big deal. So I didn't take to the culture because it wasn't a warmth that I felt as a child. And I'm not always a white girl, white girl with your daddy. Well, I'm supposed to grow up loving that. No, I didn't love that. So um, I always sort of romanticized the white side of my family and the English and, ooh, there's castles and Shakespeare and Spice Girls. And that was more interesting to me because I could put it on a pedestal because I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like a faraway land. It sounds mystical. And I put my granddad on a pedestal. It's another alcoholic gambler and womanizer, and, you know. <laughs> so it's, um, that's how I grew up. And so I was like, I need something else. And then I got to LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. Some pretty hey, white boys in LaGuardia. I'm gonna live forever. Oh my god, they played guitar and they had the long blonde hair and they would flip oh, their yeah. hair. And I was like, what the fuck? I was just like taken with this. And um, I still dated, like I had like a Mexican boyfriend when I was 15, who was like a lot older than me. He should be in jail. And um, he was really how, how much how much older? He was probably like 22 or something. And I was That's like, not, oh geez, I've heard way worse. I was like 16. But that's not legal. Um, and his dick was the most disgusting fucking cock I've ever seen in my life. It was like purple and short. That's sad. And his sad. pubes. So oh. it was like the grimace from blech. McDonald's. It was just blech. like blech. his fucking pubes were like you know those monkeys that have 
It's like Japanese monkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know what you mean. With the hair, with they look like Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why his pubes were so straight and long? Like I could fucking braid them. Oh, and his nipples were purple, and it just ugh. And that from that moment, I was like, I fucking like white guys. I'm not going to experiment anymore. I know what I like. And I've hooked up. I've had I had like a black guy threesome for New Year's right before the pandemic. No, who um, hasn't? With, one of them was with a guy named Orgy. Um, he's Nigerian, so I thought that was funny. And I his name was Orgy. Threesome. Yeah, <laughs> only me. And um. But yeah, no, I know, I know what I like. So then I, I didn't realize that I was dating guys that look like my dad until my first boyfriend that I was telling you about with the cello and the Alec Baldwins. And um, I brought him, I, I had my dad over to his house and he walked in the door and his mom was like, I'm bowled over by how much he looks like Julian. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, they're identical. You don't see that? And I was like, no. And I felt really embarrassed. And then a friend of my family was like, oh, you date guys that look like your dad. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't think they look alike. And now I, in retrospect, they do. And I felt embarrassed. And now I joke about it because people are going to notice anyway. And I want to beat them to the punch so they can't make fun of me because it's kind of gross. And I have one cousin I want to bang also. Ugh, it's oh, it's a really? mess. But he lives in England. On the so white side. I don't know him that well. Um, and we have the same last name. So, yes, we have a lot in common. First, <laughs> second, like, is this a first cousin, second cousin? We are half cousins. So we have the same granddad, but not the same grandma. Okay, so this is like a second, third cousin. Yeah, he line. grew up in England. I didn't grow up with him. So I just met him as a hot adult. And I was like, who the fuck is this? And he's tall and he's got the abs and the, oh, and he got shot one time and he didn't know he got shot. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's man. so hot. <laughs> No, Chablis likes bad boys, uh, Nicole, as, as I'm sure you know. But bad white so, boys. I mean, bad. I like bad boys, which sounds like it wouldn't be a thing. But, like, I, uh, an example of a nerdy bad boy is I like this nerdy guy. I won't say his name. And uh, the day I met him, he pulled out a knife and, like, cut open a fish. And I was like, that's such a manly thing to be able to do. Ooh. And it was a huge knife, too. So he's like this total nerd, but he has, like, these down to earth skills. Compensating. You probably uh, like Walter White. Uh, Walter White from Bad? Yeah. That would be more into Jesse. Jesse, no, <laughs> like she'd be into Jesse. I don't like old nerdy guys. I don't have, first off, my dad has probably more hair than me. Uh, so I don't really have daddy issues, but if I did, it would be the nice hair. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Walter it's, you White know, people. Cool. I think that people think it's like, oh, I'm just attracted to my dad, but it's just that my dad's very good looking. He has a generic good looking white guy look. So right. right, it's not him specifically. I just like pretty white guys. Yeah, I know. I like him too. Uh, like I watched the Saturday Night Live skit. It was either it was it was this. Okay, so you can watch it on YouTube probably because it was this Saturday. And she's uh she's like I like cringy white guys. Give me all the cringe. So they did the segment with these three white guys lined up, and each one's like weirder and weirder until she's just like I'm gonna take her clothes off right now. Yeah, so. Oh, I like everybody's the pretty got their thing. I like the nerdy, like really mm. skinny and kind of awkward nerdy. Yeah. So everybody's got their thing. It's important. No, not to, like skinny. respect. No, Shibli, uh Nicole. I will tell you, Nicole has a very narrow window of what she has because she told me she went out with a guy that was too skinny, but then she'll say, um, "I like uh, skinny guys." And then, uh, and, and and by the way, when we first met, I asked her out and. Uh, she told me no straight off and very bluntly. And has I said, said, you're too you're just too, man for you're me. too big. <laughs> I didn't and, when I, when, and when I lose I 100 pounds, I'll go back and she'll be like, That's you're too what I skinny. Said. I was very nice. Yes. You have a very, it's, I think sexuality is just so funny because it's really something you can't help. And it's like, here's the thing I'm attracted to, you know, like you can't. Well, you I can't can manufacture the, uh, the thin thing is about the hips. And I have voluptuous hips. And I like to wrap the hips around the, the thin awkward gangly waist <laughs> but oh, it can't be too skinny you have to eat. i know but you don't like the hip bones like. but you don't what? like the hip bones and the protruding ribs not not yeah like i don't that. like the ribs uh hip bones are okay but like when they look like they haven't eaten a meal in a few days it's just like a few and months into abs 
You like muscular white guys? No, I don't like muscular. No, no, Shibli does. Shibli does. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I wish I didn't like have all these specifications because I would probably be married by now, but I can't help. No, it. don't settle. You exactly. Know. I've had people get upset with me. And you know what? I heard a term recently used for Whoopi Goldberg that she's a bed wench. And I had never known what that was. And it's like a black woman that only fucks white guys. Or, yeah, because <laughs> it comes from slave times when you were like the slaves, you were the master's like sex slave. But it's like, what? How fucking insulting? Like, you think she can help what she's attracted to? It's like telling a gay person, oh, just be straight. Like, why don't you just like, it's like the, you people are born with liking what they fucking like. And, um, and yeah, reason for that. Friend, your genetics, like your DNA is asking for these genetic traits to be brought in. That's why we're it's attracted pheromones. to it. Oh, I'm attracted to other people, but it like, it's just the, when I see them, it's just, you know, when a dog it, like senses something in the, the ears, that's what, that's me. No, I know exactly what you're At, talking like, about. That's me, and, <laughs> that's me and pale women. I, even before I got into the goth Ooh. scene, like there was like, I had crushes on these like really pale women. And then I I figured out, I'm like, wait a second, there's a common denominator here. There's a whole look. And then shortly thereafter, I found the gossip. scene. I'm like, oh, this is the look. That's you. Yeah, it's that's, nice I, to have I, that I, epiphany. Like, this is where I belong. This is like but, this movie. But it's even weird to be a white guy that's really into white girls, really white. And that's unusual. <laughs> then you sound like a white supremacist. You sound like a Nazi. I know, and I, that's not the that's not the uh, that's not the intent. And I've dated. A, no, I, I feel bad sometimes too. I mean, I'm mixed, and some people see me yes. as black, and some people just see me as white. And the people who see me just as white hear me talk about how much I love white dudes. It probably sounds it, it makes me uncomfortable on stage because <laughs> I'm like they they don't know that I'm mixed yet. So and I, the freckles I, must throw a lot of people off. Yeah, I'm just ambiguous. I'm whatever you need me to be. I like the freckles. So, freckles are nice. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, girlfriends with freckles and, uh, you know, you play Connect the Dots. It's great. But, um, <laughs> but uh, God, this is, this is going so boy. fast, and that's when you know it's a really good show. But I was going to get into your burlesque career. Does that happen as well? And we're <clears> going to have you back because there's much, many more stories to come. And, you know, hopefully we'll be collaborating in Vegas very soon on some uh, interesting shows. But I hope now, so, too. Do you have a burlesque name? Because, honestly... Your name's a really good burlesque name as it is. I know. Um, I do different characters. So the first burlesque character I did, I stripped out of a burqa because mm. I'm tired of how women are treated in Saudi Arabia. So that was a little scary because some people thought that wasn't PC, but fuck it. Um, and I was Dubai. I was yeah no. I was scared doing it that someone would find out from ISIS and come get me because they had a Muhammad painting contest in Texas, and you're not supposed to. <laughs> depict his likeness right. and people got shot so i was like someone's gonna find out about sharia fatwat and they're gonna come get me that was my <laughs> sharia fatwat yes because a fatwa is like a um you are curb your enthusiasm so fatwat sharia fatwat was my that name and then um now i do megan sparkle because mm. i hear that's that i look like megan markle with my dark hair yeah so i i always do a a woman that's like escaping a bad situation. <laughs> so it's Megan leaving England and now they fucking treated her and all that stuff. So I was wondering what um, the Megan Markle thing was. You people think you look like her. Cause I've only seen you with the, with the uh, lighter hair. So I guess I'm missing. Yeah. It. With the dark hair. I got it very often, even before she was with the prince. I'm like, do you watch um, uh, suits. suits? I'm like, no, <laughs> Rachel Zane. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? Who watches USA? First of all, uh, <laughs> But I, I, I looked her up and I was like, thank you very much. I used to get Alicia Keys a lot and Punky Brewster. That's not bad. It's not bad. I can't, not complaining. No, I, I mean, you know, that's, that's better than uh, when I had long hair. I got Bruce Valanche, but um, that's a whole other story. <laughs> well, I had long hair. They, people told me I look like the wrestler Mankind, which is uh, not as compliment. What is that? Uh, he's a guy who's so hideous. He wears a mask over his face. Why would people is, say rude shit like that? I, I, I wouldn't and, even tell you if I had the thought. And the finishing move that he had is not a wrestling move. He would take a dirty sweat sock, put it on his hand, and shove it down a guy's throat. <laughs> That's I what my friend that. said I look like. But, <laughs> but well, uh, Go ahead. No, I was going to... Well, what, it, it's almost time. Yeah, I, 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 I know, uh, but... Uh, Unfortunately... Not that I, I want to go. And, 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 you can see and, that and, and the sun is setting on me as I sit at the window. And your lights, your lights going out. But let, let's. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to to, to finish this because we're talking about burlesque, and I know you had a show 
where you squirted breast milk all over the audience. So I did want to get that story in before we go. That became Which, my for the record. Trip. I like you, but I think that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I would loud. be very upset if that happened. To me. I'd be like, but if some got in your eye, you would probably live to be like a hundred, right? So anyway. <laughs> I um I was at a burlesque show with my friend who passed away, unfortunately, and um from my breast milk. No, uh, we went went to, we went to two places. The first place I drank a bit, and then the second place, the guy knew me. The bartender knew me somehow. I guess he had seen a show of mine or something. I don't know. And he like hooked me up with a super fucking strong drink. And I was obliterated. Like people were like, are you okay? And in my head, I'm like, I look cool. Like what? You know, I thought I was passing for like normal. And well, my friend well, was me, like, are me, you let okay? Me stop you let me stop you there, Shibli. So the bartender's like, how's your newborn baby? Here's a strong <laughs> fucking drink. Right. Well, <laughs> I don't, well, moms can drink. Well, I understand, but I would think oh, that... Oh, I don't uh, think he knew about my baby. I think he knew me from a show. Like, he seen oh, okay. me do burlesque somewhere. Because this was at Nurse Betty, which is a big burlesque uh, club on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. So I say big, but it's like the size of a matchbox. But it's it's known for burlesque shows. So right. he was like, I saw you perform on blah, blah, blah. And um, so... And he wasn't a newborn. I think he was like a year and a half or two at this point. No. He was two. He was like two in it. Anyway, anyway. You're still you're still lactating at that point. I kept it going, my son, until he had eleven teeth. Yep, and I got hammered, and my I couldn't even like I I didn't know how drunk I was until after I got on stage, and I went up, and Shelly Watson is hosting, and she's fucking awesome, and she went to like Juilliard for voice and amazing voice, and she's hosting the show, and she's like, who wants to come up? And because I wasn't performing that night, I was like, I'm gonna come up. I want. Uh, you know, uh, performers always want attention. And right, it was right. some Asian chick that really went up and I kind of muscled my way up there. And she was like, I think what you're about to do is a health code hazard. And I was like, whatever. And I sprayed everybody with my breast milk and they loved it. <laughs> I was going to gonna ask, what was the reaction? They were laughing. They were like, yeah. And then my friend took a video of it and I was like, oh, you got to fucking delete that. He's like, everybody loved it. What are you talking about? Like, this was amazing. Um, I was embarrassed the next day, but uh, people start sticking their tongues out and uh, they're just like, yeah, <laughs> laughing they were it excited. up. And... They were excited to get. I mean, look at these bad boys. Who would have yeah. wanted milk from that? Mommy, apparently yeah. Nicole it Six like wanted milk, milk from that, but other than that, no. <laughs> if you ever go to New York, go to a place called the Box, and you will be okay. freaked the fuck out. There's no label; it's just a door. It's like a black door. You don't know what the fuck is inside. It's no, a regular bottle like service. That. There's places like that here in LA. Oh, it's, I mean, it looks like a regular bottle service, trendy. Like you got your table with your crew and a fucking promoter. And then at one in the morning, a show will start and mm. you will be traumatized. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I was in New York, I did a show like that. It was, uh, they had, they, they had midget jello wrestling, all sorts of stuff. It was great. Okay. That's the kind of, where was this? I want to do that. That's another fetish I was going to bring up. My friend keeps messaging me. He wants to fuck a midget and watch their limbs. <laughs> wow. Like, Bobble. I'm like, I used to fuck this person. What the fuck? Um, well, anyway. Well, that, well, that's uh, besides pale skin. That's, that's a good way. That's a good way to end it. What is your <laughs> fetish? What is your secret fetish besides pale skin? It involves pale skinned people. I want to yeah. get gang banged. I want a reenactment. I want, I'm on the shore of like a Norwegian port and a fucking long ship pulls in and it's just got a group of like 18 Vikings. And I'm like, no. And all my husbands are out uh, doing something else. <laughs> so you're, all you're the husbands ultimate. are off at war somewhere. And I'm like, oh. And I just get passed around by a group of Vikings. So your ultimate fetish is the movie Breaking the Waves. Is that a thing? You've never Ooh. seen Breaking the Waves? I want my waves broken. <laughs> simply, <laughs> simply, seriously, you've never seen the movie Breaking the Waves? No, I watch Vikings. I've watched watch Norsemen. it. Watch Breaking the Waves as soon as you can. That is the plot of the movie. Oh, Emily Watson won an Academy. She was nominated for the Academy Award. One of the best oh, performances Lord. I've ever seen in my life. Um, oh. and basically that's, that's what the, I need. I that's need the a, finale. That's I the need finale. a stiff one from like, I want to be surrounded by dicks. I love it. 
I love it. Like the I pl- want, I wish I had a couple guys out here that could just all share me together. And that's my ultimate thing. Like if I'm going to be single, I want it to be, I want to be busy with all sorts of dicks in my face. So well, that, uh, I'm waiting I, for my vaccine so I can get into that shit. But anyway, right. Um, right. that's well, stay, stay away from the Las Vegas comedy list because there's plenty of guys there that would do comics. that. But oh, God, no, thank no, you, you. No, me neither. No, me neither. No, I, I've been there, done that. And then I'm never again. I've banged two comics ever and like, nobody knows about it. So, right. <sighs> yeah. And, Unfortunately, uh, both okay. underwhelming and they know they're aware. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Well, this was okay. so much fun. Thank you for having it's me. It's a lot of fun. Please, Shibli, tell everybody all of your social media and what you got going on. You can find me on Instagram at Foxy Shabs, Foxy C H A B S. Um, and I post most of my funny shit to Facebook. You can have me on Facebook too, Shibli Quarterman. And um, I'm just looking to run a show with a venue out here of, you know, hybrid burlesque comedy show, music. I want to run another um because i produced a lot of shows in new york that were like that i did vamped and i did mm-hmm. foxy uh foxy dazzling rendezvous and i like i want to do something like that if we can get the venue that would be fucking cool uh, it, it, like i say I, I think i'm gonna be out next month so we'll we'll definitely talk about it and nicole great to have you back uh just oh thank you um right now you can add me as nicole h6 on facebook or at Nicole Six Books on Instagram. That's my only social media right now because I'm rebranding since I'm working on the script and a couple of acting gigs. Mm-hmm. Woo! And, awesome. Uh, yeah, good for you. And uh, uh, and I, I'm working on one of those scripts. And yes, you are. Commercial that uh, that you're looking for. And uh, I'm goth comedian on all social media. So please, lights going out. She's uh, she's she's <laughs> more and more down, goth as we please. go. Everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Uh-huh.